Hello everyone, welcome back! Today is Monday, and you know what that means, folks. It's time for Monday Night Raw. The reason why the show is going to be somewhat quick is because it was a weird show. And that is also the week of Cinco de Mayo, so there's a little bit different scale. Um, it's going to be Ropa Vieja is the best because that's so magnifique. And then you have Chicharrones. It's the worst and everything else kind of falls in between. You'll figure it out, trust me. Um, I have to do this kind of quick because I still have another show to book. And I have to get some sleep because tomorrow I'm busy. I have multiple online meetings and I have to go to banks. And tomorrow's just going to be rough. And then tomorrow's thing will be mile. Reminds me. Oh, I've, I can make that tomorrow. Yeah. I'll find something fun. Worst comes to worst, I just pull up a, some image. Who knows? So let's talk about Monday Night Raw. But before we get into the actual wrestling part, need some shout outs to give. Wow, too. You, sir, have earned that six count. I think he replied to something I said, probably about TM61.2. I renamed them, though. That's okay. So did Michael, Michael, Michael. You, sir, because of your name, you are master of the air drums.
Patrick YNW. You sort of just chilling with your briefcase boombox. Tough on Billy. Crawl on out of here. And then finally, Tamiya with the plot. You always win by a dirty pin. And that's all the shout outs. So uh, I have to get this kind of started. I do have other stuff to do. I do need some sleep. Sleep is good, I think. Um, cause tomorrow I have to, tomorrow I'm going to drink a little bit. Cause it is Cinco de Mayo tomorrow. Uh, so this will probably be up tomorrow. That's, that's okay. I'll fiddle with stuff. Yeah. Cause it'll edit itself when I'm asleep. Tomorrow morning, this goes up. That other video gets spliced together. That's up. So, uh, I'll see if I feel like working on it. I might fiddle with it, but. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So it starts off with the MVP Lounge. Um, he calls in Asuka, Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax. Shayna Baszler. Looks like she forgot her lines, folks. Um, I forget what she said in Latin, but she's like, no, silence is... I don't speak something. I don't know. Asuka's amazing. She just started busting out stuff. Easy peasy. Oh, what was the other one? Like She saw something about murder. That's murderers. I don't know. Then all I know is that Nia Jax went through the chair. Yeah, that was kind of it. Again, that's in lead up for the Women's Money in the Bank, which will be pretty interested. And in which I think Dr. Tom might show up, give his predictions. Or actually, I, I might have because, I don't know, it is Cinco de Mayo week. Maybe I'll have El Vagabundo do that. Who knows? Who knows where El Vagabundo is? I don't care. So let's start off. So we start with a gauntlet match. Oh, this had potential, but wow, did this ever fall flat, though. So it starts off, Bobby, the almighty Bobby Lashley. This would have really cemented himself as far as being awesome if he would have won this entire gauntlet match. I don't think he would have, but, but well, well, we'll get to the why, and that's, all at the end of the show, or at the end of the segment. Uh, so it's by so to start off. We have a gauntlet match for the last chance to get into the men's money in the bank. I guess Jeff Hardy's not going to be in there. Darn, he has to be in a ladder match on a building. He's just drooling to jump jump ten stories because you know they'd have a crash match set up or something for him. Although. You never know. You just might want to jump off a building. He's jumped off everything else before. So Bobby, well, let's get to let's focus, 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 focus. Uh, so Bobby Lashley takes on Titus O'Neil. First starts off with a test of strength and tar collar and elbow tie up. Uh, they trade blows a little bit. Lashley hits a spear. Wow, that was quick. That was a churro. Of a match. And then, because it's a column match, Akira Tozawa comes out. And I'm just like, huh? No, that's, that's not even good. Uh, you know, Akira Tozawa, he, he does start off pretty quick. Goes fast. Again, he's going to be the faster, more individual, of the, faster in, individual of the two. I'm getting confused here. Sleep deprivation setting in, folks. Does a missile drop kick. However, he eats his spear too because he doesn't knock Bobby Lashley down. And once I saw Akira's out, I'm like, he's not getting in money at the bank. Uh, 
this is a chicharrone. And then this next part had such potential. Shelton Benjamin comes out next to face Bobby Lashley. That This could have been so good. Uh, Shelton Benjamin probably gets the most offense in so far. Starts off fast. Uh, eventually, this, this time, Bobby Lashley actually goes after Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin's smart. He low bridges. The headstrong Bobby Lashley. Again, it was back body drop, shoulder attack. Then Lashley is eventually... I know, that's not the next match. Low bridge. And Shelton then goes to the outside. A lot of barricade spots. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. We're going to hear that song a couple times tonight, folks. So let's see, just kind of reading off my notes. I could probably put that there. I don't want to poke the screen. That would not be good. I'm not... One day I'll get a second screen. Because darn, that thing's awesome. This thing, yeah, it's pretty good. The heck's that? But, oh no, I know what that is. That's that. That's that wire. That was a piece of fuzz. I'm sorry. So then, um, where was I? No, faster pace. He, he, he's... There was some terrible kick. This whole match felt like, this whole gauntlet match felt like it was put together in the last minute. Because of Sheldon Benjamin, he did do a little bit better. That's a churro of a match. Then, Umberto Carrillo comes down. Lashley, he, he's just too strong for Umberto. And I'm like, wait, they're really going to have Umberto job out? Yeah. They did one of those weird things. Um, he hit the, that, that, that like, face first back body drop onto Umberto. Like, picked him up back body drop. Literally slung him back down. So he kind of flipped back and then went flopped around right his face first. Ate a shoulder tackle. That was amazing. Uh, eventually, Umberto rolls to the outside, gathers himself. Once this match picks up, once the pace gets a little bit faster, and Umberto can fly, he can move around, that's again when Umberto starts to take, or at least put himself into the match at least. And this is just the story of the faster, quicker person versus a true powerhouse. The, the brute, the, the heelish, brutish Rudo versus the faster Better looking technical. You're gonna hear a lot of those terms this week too. Uh, the power of Lashley again. He just he just like threw almost from corner to corner for Umberto Carrillo. Then he got in the corner. Uh, Lashley just started to pummel him. Then uh, I knew they were gonna do something screwy. <sighs> Lashley actually pushed the ref. He put his hands on our ref, which caused the DQ. This match was actually going pretty good, but once they had that long finish, again, this part, it's another churro of a match. And the next person, Nemo's handsome man, Angel Garza, comes in. And Lena Vega. Wow, she just likes to show hip. At least she has hips to show. Uh, who was it? Seer. Oh, also the thing. I'm very curious. Um, at the kind of the beginning of the smash, it starts off, and they cut to a backstage segment. Bobby Lashley's with Lana. And Lana's hair is not blonde anymore. Lana, 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 Lana. Nope. Lana's, Lana's no bueno no more. Uh, so in this match, it's you just have cousin-on-cousin cousin violence the way it should always be. Not cousin-on-cousin cousin action. That's just disgusting. But cousin-on-cousin cousin violence. That's better. Uh, <laughs> then again, there's great chain wrestling. Again, because they're cousins, they probably know each other. 
Angel Garza does amazing chain wrestling. He does spot after his, he does move after not so much spot, but move after move after move. He ties everything together, makes shows a complete picture. Uh, let's see here then again cousin and cousin Violencia. And the pace of the match actually gets quickened, which is good because before it was slow, kind of plodding. He does that like chin lock camel clutch version, that Mexican swing. Zelina Vega just shows off hip. And I think one person posted Charlotte's nudes. I think the two things offsetting about Charlotte, one, her, 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 her titties are terrible. And, and two, you can see all the pelvic bone. That's disgusting, folks. She looks normal down there. But, like, everything else is bony, though. Ugh, ugh, ugh. It looks good down there. Not so much good anywhere else. And she has her father's chin, which is not a blessing. As long as she doesn't have her father's forehead. That thing was paper thin. That's a whole other issue. Um, so he gets stuck in the Mexican swing. Then there was a series of one counts. Angel Garza is definitely getting frustrated. Hits the acai moonsault. And he goes up for a superplex. We should have finished it, but no. It was countered into a surprise roll-up by Umberto Carrillo. This was so far the best match, though. This is a taco of a match. And the next person to come in the ring was Austin Theory. Yeah, this is kind of weird. This is all of Zelina's men showing up. I would have... It would have been more interesting if, if it wasn't going to be the ending it was if Austin Theory or Angel Garza won and gave their spot to Andrade because I don't think Andrade's in the ladder match. So it would have been interesting said, Primero... It is my spot for you, El Señor. And he would be muy, muy appreciative. I don't even know what I'm saying. So Austin Theory comes in. Austin Theory goes right after Umberto and Theory. Oh, here. Uh, Theory, this time, he actually, he actually had the superplex, too. So I guess, yeah, the other one was just a roll-up. I'm sorry, folks. I got my matches mixed up. They look so much the same. Austin Theory again beats on poor Umberto Grillo. It's a super superplex. So this time he gets small packaged. And I don't know, this was okay. This is just a churro. And then you can't get none. I am phenomenal. AJ. Styles comes out. Whoa, this was a shocker. Everyone thought it was dead. I'll tell you what, the one thing AJ did bring to this match, which I don't even think Zelina Vega uh, conveyed, um, for some reason her voice wasn't as loud as it was the past couple of times. She wasn't yelling as much. Maybe because it's not Andrade. Who knows? Her husband's not there to egg her on either. But AJ Styles, I think, for most of the matches, ripped into... Umberto Creole, the trash talking. This actually made it feel less like an exhibition match and actually felt like a real wrestling match. It didn't feel like a, a wrestling tryout. Uh, so AJ Styles comes in the ring. People are shocked. He just sneezes Umberto. He's like, ha, <laughs> sucker. I don't take all advantage right now. AJ's talking. And then even Umberto starts to yell. So it's a little bit more active, a little bit more vocal. A it's more lively. It's something. Even though WWE is saying they might come back to do live shows in June, we'll see. They could probably do some of the smaller NXT shows, and they're not feeling in the Amway Center. I know that much. Uh, unless something like miraculous happens. Although, if you've heard about these murder, murder hornets, it's just one thing after the other. Because it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. That's a whole other video, though. Maybe one day. Who knows? 
Um, so AJ Styles, again, he does the abdominal stretch, and then very New Japan style AJ. Oh, elbows right into the exposed. Stretched ribs and, and lateral obliques and lats and intercostals of the poor, broken, beaten Umberto Carrillo. And then a dragon through leg whip. Again, this time AJ's smart. He's learned from his opponents. Umberto tried the inside cradle, did not work. Instead, there was a pump, pump handle gut buster by AJ Styles into the calf crusher. AJ Styles wins. It's just that they, they could have done so much more. What is AJ Styles? You know what? I'm going to upgrade because it, it is AJ Styles and he was just so much better than everything else. This, folks, was a burrito of a match. And then AJ Styles cuts a promo saying, I'll do whatever I feel like doing. I feel bad. <laughs> it's funny because AJ Styles is still wearing, still wearing an, OC, an uh, OC shirt. We'll see how that goes. Then Charlie is back there with Seth Rollins for an interview. Then Ch Charlie also interviews Murphy. I didn't realize that Murphy is that small. And Seth Rollins isn't that much taller either. Now, now that you see him in comparison to Charlie. Charlie's normally tiny. Although Charlie does stand over his Lena Vega. That's not saying much because Lena Vega is like all of 4 foot 11. She's not 5 feet, folks. And four foot eleven might be a stretch too. So then we had what I call TV sixty one, Fink and Thorn taking on Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. And wow, oh the pace finally picked up after one hour of a boring slog fest, with the exception of AJ Styles, because he actually made it something exciting. Uh, TV61, which is what I call them, after a little pep talk by MVP, we got Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. I'll tell you what, Alexander and, and Ricochet, jeez, they're fast. The tandem work they do is so good. I was so excited. Uh, Ving provides a distraction, though. Uh, that gets Cedric into some trouble. Ricochet poses too much. However, he did kneel that Huracrana when he when, um Thorn was at the top. Ricochet did do that Huracron from the mat. That's amazing. And I'll tell you what, that flying drop kick. Wow. That's some good stuff. Then Thorne came in with a cannonball. And then Vic actually hit the boot. To, to, I want to say Ricochet. And they're having Ricochet and Cedric Alexander job already? Wow. This was shocking. I was, whoa. I was shocked it got me interest got me back interested in the show. This is a burrito of a match. Then with the Street Profits taking on the Viking Raiders. I'll tell you what Montez starts by trying to do a lot of flippy stuff. He's he has to be careful. I hope he tapes his ankles because I'm not too sure those Nike Shoes, I don't, yeah, I don't even know what they are. I just know they're Nike shoes. They're fancy. They're expensive. They're something this hobo will never be able to afford. Probably for forever. Because I need other stuff. Like bills and cell phones and more wrestling t-shirts. So, yeah, he's so flippy. Although, he has to be careful. He almost broke his ankle. It's like, ooh. Either that or he tapes up his ankles so heavily that... Um, so while Montez Ford gets beat up, Eric just clubs Dawkins. Ivar gets off the ring apron, runs around, clubs Dawson some more. Poor Dawson's getting beat up. And then splashed. Splashed him. That's just... You, don't want to, you do not want a big guy splashing you. That is bad news. Uh, Ivar eventually gets tagged in again. Uh, then he splashed Ford. Ford should be dead with a broken ankle of everything. Uh, Ford's just getting beat down. At least they're loud. They're shouting. They feel like they're in pain. Bianca Belair probably should have been there to add a little bit more vocality to it. Be a little bit more bombastic. 
and at least fill that empty performance center with something. Um, it's good as a TV audience that you're actually getting this, at least them talking to each other. That makes it a little bit more plausible. But when it's dead quiet and the announcers um, don't have anything to say here, you hear the crickets. That's what I want to say. You hear crickets. It's terrible. You can hear a mouse fart in that arena. And that's not good for a wrestling arena. Because generally that means if you ever go to a wrestling match and it's dead quiet, that means people don't care. You can have a good match, you can have a bad match, just don't have a boring match. Worst thing you could ever do is have a boring match. I've seen one of them. Yeah. I've seen bad matches. Sometimes they're so bad they're comically good. That's something else completely. But boring matches, oh, they're the worst. Because sometimes in bad matches, people will just leave. You can tell they're honestly trying. It's just bad. Sometimes they're just flat out boring, though. Completely different issue. So then, uh, again, Ford, again, he's a smart of the two, gets beat on a little bit. I ever got pounced into the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Coo -coo -coo -choo. That barricade got beat up. I feel bad for people that have to reset that all the time. Shane uh, Ford then makes his comeback. A, a drop kick splash combo. Good announcement because they really saved that because that could have been a, been a weird botch. It was almost near a weird bout botch. Again, this whole show kind of felt botchy. Uh, Ivar makes his comeback, but it was a really slow DDT. Uh, like, not even a tornado DDT, but just a counter DDT. It just seemed really like I, it, it went my speed. That's not good. And there was a spine buster and that high frog splash. That was great. However, Ivar was there to break up the pin. Eventually, Dawkins eats the pin after a Viking experience. So they pinned the bigger of the two. I was shocked with this. This again, the Viking Raiders went over. They, I, I could have sworn this was for the title, but I guess not. Oh well. They deserve a title shot. The Viking Raiders win. It's another burrito of a match. And <laughs> I'll tell you what. The reason why I say Murphy and, and Seth and Seth are so tiny. Charlie looks so dwarfish next to Drew McIntyre. It's not even funny. And then Charlie's a little bit shorter than the Viking Raiders, but not much. Then Alistair Black, tell me how it felt, AJ, to be buried alive. Because you will not bury me. But I would want you to knock on my door and pick a fight with me. Because you want to throw me off the top of Titan Towers. That's reserved. For Jeff, Hardy, or Brother Nero, or Itchweed. Yes. So, again, it's kind of fun. It's funny because you've I've heard him speak, and he speaks perfectly fine English, which is weird. Although people in the Netherlands, he doesn't really have much of that cartoon, I guess, I hate to say it, but cartoonish uh Dutch accent. He, if you saw him in the street, you'd say, "Yeah, he's he's, he's he speaks like a normal Englishman or normal American." I'm sure he has a slight accent when you hear him live. I I heard him live. I'm like, this is not that much different. Again, I don't want to be at that big family gathering between the Puerto Rican Zelina Vegas family and, and the Dutch Alistair Black's family. That should be interesting. But I digress, though. Uh, but, yep. So then it was Ray Mysterio kind of promo. Then, woo! Charlotte Flurry comes out. And what did I put there? Oh, yeah, there was a little thing about Jinder Mahal. Charlotte Flurry comes out because of promo. Liv Morgan says, remember me? And Charlotte's like, who are you? Again, this is when Charlotte's nudes came up in Discord. And it's like, yeah, she looks great down there. 
but right above it looks bony, and up top, eh eh. It just looks weird. And again, she has her father's chin. I guess as long as she doesn't have her father's forehead. She is a natural woman, though. So that's always a good thing. Uh, starts off headlock mania. Oh, wait, I forgot to say this. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, the Viking Raiders versus Street Profits. Maybe I did say it. It was a burrito of a match. So in this match, it was Headlock Mania, Liv. Again, head of the missile drop kit. She comes back a little bit. Liv slides underneath Charlotte Flair. Um, <laughs> eats a stomp. Poor her. Uh, she kind of gets her little comeback. Hits a... So with this match, um, it was a pretty good match. Again, that figure eight's pretty predicted. <sighs> And good back and forth. It was, it, was, it, was, it was fine. It's just a little bit better than fine. It's a burrito of a match. I'm going to conserve some paper. Because then we have Drew McIntyre taking on Body Murphy. Although tomorrow you will see me eat food live. Because tomorrow I'm making queso, quesadilla burgers. And chips that should be pretty fun so i actually have to get stuff done early because it does take a while to cook burgers because it's kind of like they're like twice cooked burgers uh a quesadilla burger to me you cook the you grill the hamburger grilled burgers are best put that into a fajita wrap put a thick slice of queso blanco on top some hot pico de guy on top of that wrap that up sometimes i have to put a second one Put that back on the put that back on the grill. Get a little toasty feeling. That's that's when it gets really good. Have some of those. Dip them in crema to cool down that heat. Have some fresca or have some fresha, some like champagne cola. It's like the one thing I can know I find it's so good. It's so expensive though. Well, as far as soda goes. Maybe, uh, I don't know. I'll see about making a video for it tomorrow. Yeah, probably not, but that's okay. Maybe it'll be a standalone video. Who knows? I'll figure, I'll figure something out, folks. Trust me on that. Um, and then just some tortilla, um, Katina style chips. Yeah. Katina, Catalina, whatever it is. Katina, I think. Um, so then, in our main event of the evening, we have Drew McIntyre taking on Murphy. It was funny, because again, in the promo, Drew's like, he almost called him Buddy Murphy. He's like, does he even know what his own name is? I like that. Drew's, even Drew addresses the fact that people lose their names in the, in the WWE. And this just starts off, kill, Drew, kill, 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 murder Drew, murder him, Drew. He just beats up Murphy. It's dropped into the barricade. I'm the barricade. I'm the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. And then he goes over the barricade into the LED board. And wow, Murphy was just getting beat up. Drew got distracted because Seth Rollins was there. Seth. Evil Seth was like even full beard Seth. It took him months to grow that. This only took me. Not even two weeks. A little more than two weeks. Seth's not winning a beard contest, beard growing contest with this guy. I know that much for sure. Uh, then Murphy again hit a meteora. Tried to pin Drew. Got a got a one count. Then he starts to chop chop Drew. That was just annoying. Drew McIntyre hit the Scottish headbutt. Eventually hit the one, two, three, Claymore. And then he pinned Murphy, tossed him out. Cesar go in. Drew gets on the knees and says, please, come in. Seth being the heel, did not oblige. That was another burrito of a match. And that was Monday Night Raw. Really? Felt like a taco.
So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, so this week, tomorrow is going to be a double video. Probably sometime during the day, I'll be putting up Cinco Mania. And then I'll have my AEW live review. I have to change the ratings again to make it more Cinco de Mayo themed. And I have to make a... I have to actually make that for, for, for them too. Go all, go all, all, all out Cinco de Mayo. Which, by the way, this is when... People say it's the Mexican Independence Day. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not a Dia de Muerta. That's actually, I think, the day after Halloween is El Dia de Muerta, the Day of the Dead. I don't think it's Halloween. I think it's like the day after. Uh, Mexican Independence Day is sometime in July. This is the Battle of Puebla, where the Spanish fought the French and kicked the French out of Mexico. Good. The French deserve to get beat up wherever they go. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I guess. Okay, El, El Vagabundo, Del Hobo Cinco Five, wherever you.